180 days ago, I got a praying mantis egg case. In today's video, we're going to watch the amazing life of a praying mantis unfold. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing, and if you want to support the channel even more, check out the Creature Kingdom Patreon to support future videos. Everyone and everything starts out as nothing, simple organisms with the potential to become something. On day one, we have this mysterious looking pod. This isn't a pine cone or a seed or even a weird looking marshmallow. This is an Utica. It looks so simple and hollow, but if you look closer, this egg case is filled with hundreds of chambers, each containing a future praying mantis. 50 days later, I woke up to see this. I was lucky enough to see this amazing event, the hatching. Each mantis appears to look like a worm at first, wiggling and struggling to get free from its chamber, moving back and forth. Hundreds of mantis hatch over the course of a couple hours, each racing for survival. You see, the moment these mantids start moving around in their chambers, their life begins. The last of the mantids hatch and the race for survival begins. They are all brothers and sisters. By the morning of the next day, the mantids have finished hatching, and most have begun walking. They are now officially nymphs, but some didn't make it. They couldn't escape from the Utica. Unfortunately, it's a part of every Utica's hatching, and they're so delicate you can't do anything to help them without severely damaging them. But for the survivors, their instincts immediately kick in, and they think about two things, water and food. I misted the enclosure careful not to drown the tiny mantids, as the drops can be deadly to newborn mantids. Hundreds of mantids begin to bend down and drink the little droplets of water. It's amazing that these little nymphs know nothing about the world, but no rainfall when it occurs. On day 52, it's time to feed this army of mantis nymphs. These mantids are tiny, and the perfect food supply for them are wingless fruit flies. Being so new to the world, you would expect the mantids to be a bit clueless when hunting prey. Right? Wrong. These mini hunters know exactly what to do. As we dump in fruit flies, hundreds of mantids instantly snatch them up, without hesitation. Then, they instantly begin feeding for the very first time. But, now a new problem has arisen. These mantids are actual cannibals. After feeding as many mantids as we possibly could, we can no longer care for this many nymphs. What's that old saying? If you love something, set it free? Fortunately, it is perfectly fine to release this mantis species into the wild where I live, so that's exactly what we do. I head outside and watch hundreds of praying mantis nymphs disperse. As sad as it is to see most of them go, this is definitely the best thing for them. I decided to keep just two mantids. Hopefully, we can get a female and male, but they are too young to determine that right now. Starting them off in a small plastic container, they need to be able to hang upside down and to be able to find prey. That's the most important thing. Six days later, and something exciting happened. One morning, I woke up and found a little skeleton next to the mantis. But that's not a skeleton. It's a molt. Molting is an extremely dangerous time for mantids, but if they can make it, they grow significantly larger every time. On day 80, both the mantids have molted twice, and now large enough to switch prey items. They have been eating 5 to 10 fruit flies a day, so now we can upgrade the prey size. We're switching to tiny crickets. Crickets are a bit riskier as they can sometimes chew on molting mantids. We have to be careful when we feed them. This is the first time this little mantis has ever seen a cricket. These little guys are eating machines and will eat until their abdomen is absolutely stuffed. On day 90, something tragic has happened. One of her mantis has had a bad molt and is severely damaged. His back legs couldn't properly get out of the molt and this is not good. 
I was checking up on our injured mantis, and it appears he has gotten significantly worse. I've been able to get him water and some pre-killed food, but it simply wasn't sufficient, and he appears depleted and out of energy. It's time to say goodbye. Death is a part of life for all organisms, and this little mantis just had bad luck with his molt. He had a short life, but he did his best. Our last mantis has continued to grow and molt. We can now see that the mantis is a female. The female mantids are larger and heavier than males, and they're infamous for eating the males during mating. But we don't have a male for that, so for now, I'm just enjoying watching her eat and grow. I haven't been completely honest to this point. I was telling the truth when I said we only kept two Chinese mantids, but we do have two of a completely different type of mantis. We have two young green mantis or macro mantis, a male and a female. I didn't hatch these two from an egg, but I did get them when they were just in their second molt. They are continuing to grow and have amazing vibrant green colors. Our Chinese mantis is getting bigger and bigger, and I think she deserves a real home and not just some plastic cup to live her whole life in. After a couple hours, I give you the mantis rainforest. We have lots of horizontal and vertical branches for her to climb on, and most importantly, to hang off from when she molts. Some live plants help her to hide and ambush prey. And of course, we added in some springtails and isopods to break down organic material. Now, we just have to put her in this new rainforest enclosure. At first glance, this looks like a mantis, but then you realize it's not. It's a grasshopper. These insects feed on vegetation and have powerful back legs to help them jump huge distances. But he's crawling around, completely unaware that he's being watched from above. And just like that, the grasshopper is grabbed by the Chinese mantis. This is a tricky situation. Those powerful back legs can damage the mantis if she is hit by them. But she begins eating. Munching away, the large grasshopper doesn't get the opportunity to escape, and the mantis claims the victory. The day has finally come. Our Chinese praying mantis has successfully molted for the final time, marking the beginning of adulthood. She's developed full wings and is way bigger than before. She can eat just about any insect that crosses her path and is thriving in her new home. But her final challenge awaits her, a dubia roach. These critters are scavengers and live on the jungle floor. They are rich in nutrients, but also difficult to take down. I guess not. She eats through this massive meal and is officially declared the queen of insects. Perhaps the most bittersweet part of keeping praying mantis is that they grow up so quickly as they only live for about 10 months. A short life, but an important one. And if you get the opportunity to raise a praying mantis, I highly recommend it. Oh, and I didn't forget about our giant green mantids, but you'll have to wait until next time to see what happens to them.